first things first I'ma say all the words inside my head I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been oh, oh. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel So I just want to have a quick chat about supply Quantity supplied and the different curves that you can have, right? So my name is Garob Sishole As you guys should know and as you guys can see I'm very tired so I won't be standing this time around but i will still be showing you your curves using pen and paper because those are the only resources we have right now so supply when we say supply guys we mean that the relationship between your price as well as your quantity supplied so we mean the relationship between what is on your y-axis as well as, as well as what is on your x-axis so what is on the x-axis and what is on the y-axis so that's what supply is and then quantity supplied, on the other hand, really looks at what is on the x-axis only. So that would be the number of units that you're going to be producing, right? So that's the difference between supply and quantity supplied. So the reason why you make a distinction between these is because you're going to need to ensure that you understand that there's a difference between movements along the supply curve as well as a complete shift in the supply curve so that you can be able to answer your questions. So when we say movements along the supply curve, we mean that the graph did, did not change, but you just move from point A to B on the very same curve. And that would be because of price and only price, right? So when you have changes in price, you are going to have movements along the very same supply curve, right? Are you guys sorted? And then when we talk about a complete shift in the supply curve, what we are talking about is anything that is external that is affecting your supply and causing it to either shift to the right or shift to the left. So you could have things like changes in the prices of your raw materials, right? When your raw materials cost more, obviously less people are going to be supplying. So your supply is going to shift inward. If the prices of your raw materials are lower, then more people are going to be willing to supply. So your supply is going to be higher, shifting to the right right and then we could look at i wrote them down we could look at expected future prices so in terms of expected future they're never going to ask you to list them you just need to understand the shifts that they cause right so the second one is expected future prices i'll show you the curve for this one but i just want to explain what it means so with the expected future prices what we are basically saying is that we are going to allow the law of demand the law of supply to guide us rather the law of supply says the higher the price the lower the quantity demand guys wow sorry the law of supply says the higher the price the higher the quantity supplied so meaning if you expect your future prices to be higher you are going to supply more in the future and supply less right now right and if you expect your future prices to be lower and higher right now you're going to supply more right now and supply less in the future right are you guys fine i'm just going to show you guys the curve the most the curves the most important thing about this is to understand where you are when you are drawing your curves are you drawing your curves right now or are you drawing your curves in the future right and then the next one would be the number of suppliers in that market True, so you, i'll show you guys the curves um the most important thing with the number of suppliers is to understand what happens to your quantity and what happens to your supply when there's an increase in price so for example if there's a when there's an increase in supply rather so for example if there's an increase in supply your supply is going to shift so i'll show you the graphs don't worry and then the last one would be technology so with technology obviously Technology is going to allow you to produce goods more efficiently. And when you're able to produce more efficiently, you'll be able to supply more. With less technology, you'll be able to supply less because you won't be efficient. Um, you won't be maximizing your production. So, yes, guys, that was just the content part. Now we'll just get into the videos. So we'll get into the video when we do the graphs. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do so, guys. Make sure you click that subscribe button. Okay, guys, so in this segment of the video, as I said, I'll be doing your shifts, right? So I'm just going to incorporate um, demand, the shifts that you can have in demand. So as we said, the demand curve slopes downward, and then the supply curve slopes upward. This would be your supply and demand. Right, and then we can look at the different shifts that these two could have. So let's name this as our D0 in this is our s0 
So an inward shift, so meaning if it shifts this side, that would be an inward shift. That's a decrease in supply, right? So let's call that S1. So this is decrease in supply. So just know that any decrease is going to have an inward shift, right? So let's have another inward shift for demand and name that D0, right? So that's decrease in demand. All you need to know is that a decrease is going to have an inward shift. And then an increase on the other hand, sorry, an increase on the other hand is going to have an outward shift. So for your supply, it's going to be like this. And for your demand, it's going to be something like this. This was our D0, this was our S0, so this is D1, this is S1, right? So this would be your increase in supply, increase in demand, right? So that's how you would show your shifts. And then I said I wanted to discuss expected future prices and number of supply and see how that affects your thingy. So this one is for now, this one is for in the future so an increase in expected prices, in expect in an in increase in expected future prices in terms of supply, peop, um, the suppliers are going to supply more in the future and less now. So now, when there's an increase, future prices, right? So let's have our initial supply. S zero. Please make sure you are careful with your references because sometimes they give you a lot of graphs. Sorry, this is D0. S0, right? So we said an increase in future prices. So when we look at an increase in future prices, suppliers are going to supply less now and more in the future. So right now, there's going to be a decrease in my supply. So an inward shift. Same thing happens in the future. When I have my demand and my supply, my initial demand and my supply. In the future, because the prices are higher, they are going to produce more. So they are going to have an outward shift in the future. Yes, one. So it's very important for you guys to understand whether you are looking at the shifts now or in the future. Let's look at a decrease now. Decrease in future prices now and in the future so you would have to start with your initial demand and supply initial demand and supply now in the future right so if there's a decrease in future prices it means that the price you are going to charge in the future is going to be lower than it is right now so suppliers are going to supply more right now because the price is higher right now relative to the future right and then supply less in the future because the price in the future is lower relative to now So as I said, a decrease inward shift, increase outward shift. So S1, right? So that is how you expect the prices. That those are the shifts for your expected prices. And then for your change in supply, increase in supply. When you say increase in supply, we mean increase in the whole curve, right? So we're gonna have two changes: increase in supply and decrease in supply. So an increase in supply. You start with your initial curves, so D0, S1, and increase in supply, outward shift, as I said. So as you guys can see, this is where I was at first, D0. Now this is where I am. If you check, now this is where I am. So another concept I want to focus on is the concept of indeterminates. So I just want you guys to understand that if supply and demand moves in the same direction. So for example, if you have an increase in supply and an increase in demand, your quantity will increase, but price will be indeterminate. Determinate. 
right so ask yourself whether supply and demand are going the same direction if that is the case then your quantity is going to be you're going to be able to know it because if it's an increase you're going to have an increase in quantity if it's a decrease decrease in quantity however the price is going to be indeterminate in this case right because think about it an increase in supply reduces the price but an increase in demand um, increases the price right so you have an increase and a decrease in price and as a result unless you are given figures you're not going to know how much the decrease was right so that's why we say the price will be indeterminate um but if they are going in opposite directions then the quantity will be indeterminate And price will change, right? So, yeah, those are your indeterminates, guys. Hopefully, this video helped you. Um, we'll do a video on elasticity, on equity, etc. Um, I also just want to announce, guys, that I am going to be hosting a bootcamp for test one. So, you can sign up that for that bootcamp by texting me. The poster will be released soon. If you are interested, this is my number. Right, if you are interested and you want to get more information about the bootcamp, just make sure you text me. I'm not going to do all videos on for test one content because I know it's chapter one to six. So I'll do a few videos so that you guys see how I teach. And then we'll do the rest of the videos in the bootcamp. And in the bootcamp, we'll do a test. So I won't be doing a test on on test one so yeah guys um text this number in order to get more information on the bootcamp bye guys